Hey, Life at Tupelo family. Thank you so much for attending today's worship service. We are so extremely excited that you are all here with us today. If this is your first time being with us, we have a free gift for you at the hospitality desk located in the main entrance of our church. Today is going to be an amazing day. Now let's watch the rest of our announcements. Thanks, Lance. The She's for Christ Missions Drive concludes today. Thank you for your giving towards missions. Last year, Life at Tupelo was a top 10 church in the Mississippi district in She's for Christ giving. And as you leave today's worship service, we have provided a drop-off box where you can fill it full of coins, cash, and checks. Thank you again for supporting She's for Christ and sending the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. In August, our Life at Tupelo Phase 2 reopening plan is as follows. Our church program change is Wednesday in-house services resume with 7 p.m. prayer in the main sanctuary and our midweek schedule to begin promptly at 7.30 p.m. Nursery and life classes will resume with limited ministry activity and programs. Our safety focus is reduced to appropriate and moderate safe distancing with masks recommended entering and leaving our facility. Our space seating will still be in operation. With that said, join us for our in-house midweek worship this Wednesday, August 26th for life classes throughout our campus in our fourth Wednesday format. Oasis, Fusion, Hyphen, Crew, Glow, and Shine will meet in the respective class areas. Ages three to eight years of age will be in the kids life room for an exciting children worship service. Midweeks are always phenomenal here at Life at Tupelo, and we want to encourage everyone who are safe and well to be in attendance. On Friday morning at 9 a.m. will be our weekly corporate prayer meeting in the main sanctuary. Thank you to everyone who's involved in this kingdom impacting ministry. And finally, on Saturday, August 29th at 6 p.m., the Singles Ministry will host an evening social for more information, please connect with Amanda Tejan. Now back to Lance. Thank you again for attending today's worship service. For all updates and announcements, please visit our website at lifeattupelo.com. Here at Life at Tupelo, we are a church where everyone is welcome, nobody is perfect, and anything is possible. Amen, do you believe that? Why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, how about the rest of you? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. This is a time where we bring our minds into captivity. We get our minds on the Lord, and we're here to lift up His name and to worship Him. And you know how it works. When the praises begin to go up, the blessings and the Spirit of the Lord begins to come down and begins to move, and we are changed, and we are moved in the house of the Lord. It is so good. We want to welcome each of you. What a good-looking crowd here this morning. We want to welcome those who are joining online uh, today. We pray that you are blessed in your home as you join us. And uh, we know that God is going to do some great things. I read for you today Psalm chapter 40 and verse 1. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry. Anybody ever been there? And he said, he lifted me out of the... Miry, but the NIV says the slimy pit. You know, the Bible says never forget the pit where God found you. Aren't you thankful that one day in your pit and in your mire that the Lord came to you and reached down to where you couldn't reach up and pulled you up from that? And here David is saying he pulled me out of the mire and I'll never forget it. And he said he set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. And verse 3 is where I want to draw your attention to. He said, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord. We're getting ready to sing about a new song today. Each of you today has a new song. You see, David understood that, and he wrote about it. He said, the Lord put a new song, because if it wasn't for God coming to where I was at, David said, my song would say that I was a murderer, or my song would say that I was an adulterer. But because God came and pulled me up, I've got a new song to sing today. 
Oh, there's some of you today, if it wasn't for the Lord, your song would say sickness. Your song would say cancer. Your song would say depression. Your song would say sin. And some of you, your song would be in the grave. But the Lord found me. The Lord came and pulled us up. And we've got a new song to sing today. So sing it loud. And let's worship the Lord together today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't it exciting to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Oh, why don't we just take a moment to lift our hands. Thank you, Jesus, that you've given us a new song. Lord, I thank you that you're here with us today. We worship and praise you. Worship with us as we sing this morning. I want to sing a new song. Shout it out.
He put a new song in my heart, a song of praise, thanksgiving. How many love him with all of your heart? Why don't we just lift both hands right now and love him? Thank him that you're able to be in the house of the Lord. Thank him that you can feel his awesome presence in this building right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. A few minutes ago when I pulled down out of Thomas Street, I was making a left turn and had my signal light on. And I had to wait and wait and wait. Cars kept turning in. I said, wow, awesome. We're going to block Thomas Street one of these days. Getting in and out of here, amen. It's just great to see you in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning. And if you're a guest, please feel at home and worship and enjoy the presence of the Lord and know that you are welcome here. But it comes time for us not only to give as we clap our hands and raise our hands and worship the Lord, but it comes time to worship in giving. How many know the Lord loveth a cheerful giver? Now we smile when we give. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and we love to give to the work of the Lord. And I want to commend you for your faithfulness in giving. And if you have not found out yet the blessing of tithing and giving your offering to the work of the Lord, give it a try. I can tell you it works. Amen. And uh, give today as God has blessed you. And I'm sure on the screen they'll give us uh, our ways to give, and you choose the way that you'd like to do that. And uh, hospitality death, desk, amen. <laughs> Life at Tupelo.com, Faith Teams app, or text give to 662-546-1736. And there's a basket out at the hospitality booth. When you go out today, if you haven't give, be sure to give there. If you give when you come in the services, and God will bless you and he will reward you for giving. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise right now. And let's worship in song and you may be seated.
something about my Jesus. There's something about a broken heart. There's something about a need. There's something about a person who is desperate that he just can't help but to step on the scene. And sometimes it may take a moment. Sometimes it feels like you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're saying, God, what is going on? Why am I not seeing my promise? But that's up to you to take a stand on what he's told you. It's up to you to take a stand on what he's promised you and say, God, I don't care how long it takes. I'll wait. I'm waiting on you, Jesus. Can you lift your hands with me this morning and say that with me? I will wait, Jesus. I may have a broken heart, but I will wait. I may not have my healing yet, but I will wait. I may not see the deliverance yet, but I will wait. You are near, always near to the Come on, are you waiting on the Lord today? Why don't you love him? Oh, why don't you tell him, Lord, I love you, Jesus. I know everything's in your hands. I know everything's in your control, God. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We learn so much about God in the life of Christ. He was God manifest in flesh. And we learn, let's all stand today. We're getting ready to go to the Lord for our needs today. We learn so much about his ways in those three and a half short years of his ministry. Sometimes he brought the miracle. A miracle is instantaneous. You pray and it happens and we rejoice with the miracle. And then there are other times where Lazarus died and he seemed to wait around and he didn't do it like conventional and they didn't think, Lord, what, what are you doing? And sometimes he waited, sometimes he did it instantly. But let me tell you one promise you have today that we understand about God and how he views needs through the life of Christ. Whatever you're going through today, God knows your struggle. And he's got the answer already in hand. And it doesn't matter what you're going through or what you're facing today. Today you can receive a miracle in this house. It can happen in a moment. And if it doesn't happen in a miracle, you walk away from this place knowing he knows where I'm at. Amen. He knows the valley that I'm going through, and he's going to walk through this valley with me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We want to remember James Cook today is in the hospital in Memphis. We want to remember his name before the Lord, all of our elders, especially those that are not able to be with us in the house of the Lord. Take their name to the Lord in prayer today as we pray. Let's remember the, uh, the Leje family. Uh, this is Brother Josh Allen's uh, friend of his that has passed from this life. Let's remember his family today that God would comfort them in a way that only the Lord can. I ask you to continue to remember Mel today just to report uh, her kidney. She, this, this COVID has just got her down a little bit longer. It's attacked her kidney a little bit. There's a, there's a, a diminishing or a diminish in her kidney function, but they are certain that that will come back. So I ask you to continue to remember her in prayer and call her name to the Lord when you pray. 
Amen. Let's remember Sister Loyola today. Amen. The Lord is going to continue to walk with her and bring her out of this valley. We believe it. Amen. Amen. If you stand with her today, why don't you lift a hand to the Lord? Some of you get a hold of faith today, and I want you to call her name to the Lord in prayer today. Certainly if you're in this building today. Did you feel that? I just felt the Lord move into this place in a mighty and a powerful way. The Lord's here today. So if you had a need, I want you to make your way on down to this front. We're going to anoint you with oil. and We're going to pray the prayer of faith today. Saints of God, I feel faith rising in this house. Come on. Let's take these needs to the Lord. We love you, Jesus. God, we stand here as your children today. We make our needs and our requests known unto you. God, you're able to do all things. There's nothing that we face that's too great for you. Lord, we believe, we ask, Lord, for these needs today. We pray for our elders today. You would strengthen them wherever they're at today. Many of them are watching, and we pray that you would move into the room where they're at, Lord, and you would strengthen them. We pray for James Cook today. We pray for the Leger family, God, that only you can comfort them in times like this, that you would strengthen them. I pray over Melanie today. Lord, you've walked with her through the valley so many times, and I pray that you would continue and you would bring her out today. We pray over Sister Loyola today. We pray the prayer of faith. God, that wherever she's at right now, God, that you would move in. And we lift up faith in this house today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Ah! Uh -huh. 
Can we lift our hands to the Lord right now? Father, we want your kingdom to come. We want your will to be done in this place this morning. Father, we surrender, Lord, not our will, but thy will be done. Father, you can do more in five seconds than the rest of us can do in an entire lifetime. Right now, let your spirit move upon the heart of every man, woman, and young person and those that are watching online. Move right now. Have your way in our midst, and we'll give you the glory and the praise. Can we clap our hands to the Lord this morning? We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Are you thankful for what you feel? Amen. I'm so thankful for the presence of the Lord. Certainly our kids can be dismissed at this time. Thank for, for our Sunday life teachers. And we love our kids. We love our young people, all those from age 3 to 12. Certainly, um, if you would like to go to class this morning, you're more than welcome. And... Uh, Thank you again for joining us today. Didn't our worship team do a great job today? Again, so good to have our interns, so good to have Brother Lance Lewis and Sister Kaylee Bayo, and uh, what a great job they're doing around here. Appreciate these ladies, Sister Summer, Sister Carrie, and all those that contribute to uh, giving my wife a break today. and. Uh, Certainly uh, appreciate our first lady. We've got a great team around here that can pick up and just keep moving forward. Amen. It's true to life at Tupelo, but we welcome you to the house of the Lord today. Thank you for being here. And it's so good to have Brother Caleb Glass's sister, Sister Amy Davis, here today. And I felt healing virtue flow through your body. I felt it in Jesus' name. Be healed. I curse cancer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We have been praying for you and we'll continue to pray for you. And again, if you're visiting that watch our services over a weekend and we give God the glory for that. Chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Do you have your Bible today? See a few glows today. Some of you got this Bible, that's all right. If you got one, just make sure you carry it with you. But I'm with me wherever I go. And I encourage you, if you don't have one, we'll give you one. Amen. Hopefully you do, but if you don't. Place Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. The Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your daughter was healed in two weeks. Her daughter was healed at that moment. I want you to look at your neighbor this morning, ever who's sitting to your right or left, and I want you to say, I've got a word for you. And move on. Forget about it and move on. Our hearts would be convicted this morning and we will leave today changed after listening and after being in your presence. We ask that you would be lifted up and you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Have your way in this service today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone's Madeline Ham here today Amen. with my son who is home and uh, we're glad to have him home today. The Southern Miss to the top, go Eagles, but uh, we're glad to have him home, and he's sort of... Ration is the door that breakthrough walks through, but we are now living in the age or the era of offense. It seems as if everyone is offended about something. Victimhood has gone viral. It now appears to be a 
Constitution. It's a crazy world. We no longer live in the USA. We live in the USO, the United State of Offense. Men are offended. Women are offended. Millennials are offended. The Democrats are offended. The Republicans are offended. Atheists are offended. The Saints are offended. The New Orleans Saints are offended. They're still offended, Jay, that they didn't get to go to the Super Bowl. They got cheated out of it. There's a group of vegans that are calling for the removal of meat-based metaphors. They're saying that you can't say, bring home the bacon, but you must say, bring. PETA feels that some of our phrases are offensive and they encourage animal cruelty, like you're beating a dead horse and you can't kill two birds with one stone horse. And you can feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> and that offense is silly to me, but it's serious to a lot of people. But everybody has some button. If the right person on the wrong day when you forgot to pray hits that button, you yourself will become offended. I remember as a kid playing this game called Operation and you had these tweezers and the patient was on the board game and if you hit the wrong spot, the nose would light up. That's you and that's me. All of us have things that if the right person hits it, that your nose will light up like Rudolph. <laughs> what do we do in a culture and a society of offense? Our text was Matthew chapter 15, but a few chapters later in Matthew chapter 24, the disciples came to Jesus and said, how can we know the signs of the end of time? How can we know that your return is imminent? And I won't, don't want you to forget, if you didn't listen to it, go back and listen. Last Sunday I preached, I want to see heaven. I want to see Jesus no matter what it takes. They ask him, how can we know the signs of your return? And I love Matthew chapter 2, him privately saying, tell us, when shall we know these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And in that passage of scripture, he gives a litany of things. He said, let's see. And he goes through the list. Nation will rise against nation. And there are pestilences like COVID-19. And we get so caught up in this list of things above that we miss verse number 10. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 10 says, and then shall many, everybody say many, be offended and shall what? Betray one another and shall Hate one another. How do we know that Jesus is coming soon? The Bible tells us in this passage of Scripture that many will be offended. One of the blues clues of the second coming of Jesus Christ is a culture of offended people. Jesus brings up this issue of offense in Luke as well. In Luke chapter 17 and verse 1, says, Then said he unto his disciples, It is what? Everybody say impossible. It is impossible that, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. I ask this question today. Are there any disciples here today? Are there any believers here today? I hope we all are that are in this building and that are watching online. But disciples and believers, listen to me. It's impossible that no offenses should come. How can the God 
who is the way maker and does the impossible say something is impossible. What's impossible today? Is it impossible for the sick to be healed or for the dead to be raised or for the saints to go to the Super Bowl again? Oh, no, 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 no. That's easy. Here's what's impossible. It's impossible that no offenses should come. Jesus guarantees that offenses are coming your way. He basically says it is inevitable. He promises us that somebody is going to send you a wrong text message. He promises us that sometimes your spouse is going to get on your very last nerve. He promises us that your kids sometimes are going to drive you slap crazy. He promises us that sometimes when you're waiting to get that parking space at Walmart, that somebody is going to come along and beat you to it. He guarantees that they will come. Quit being surprised when offenses come your way. But notice, he did not say that it is impossible for you to not get offended. That was preaching there and y'all didn't even realize it. Because offenses and offended are two separate and distinct things. There's a difference between offenses and offended. Offense is an action, but offended is a reaction. Offense says that you did it, but offended says, I will never forget it. Brother Justin shared this point with me this week when I told him what the Lord had laid on my heart to preach this week. Listen to this. Offense is an event but offended is a decision. The power of the word in this text is that Jesus is saying this, offenses people, they are inevitable, but offended, that is optional. That means that it is possible to live your life unoffended. Jesus is saying, I have power and I've got a grace that many believers or many disciples do not tap into. You can actually live your life unoffended in the culture where everybody is getting offended about something. The big question I have today is this. What is your current level of offendability? You can go look at Webster's. That's most probably not in the dictionary. You might not see that today. What is your current level of offendability? How much does it take for you to get offended? I've got big things in store for you. I've got things that your eye has not seen, neither has your heart comprehended. If you can get past the test of offendability with the small things. Can somebody say amen? Amen. I believe it is your level of offendability that is an indicator of your level of spiritual maturity. What God often does is put your miracle on the other side of your offense so that you will be faced with a decision. Will I stay here in this state or will I pass the test? I came to preach to you today. I know you told your neighbor that you had a word for him, and it is this. Forget about it and move on. Somebody today in this audience or listening online needs to get over it. Jesus, he knows how to offend you. Can't nobody offend you like Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus saves us, but he offends us too. He can't help but offend you. Why? Because the Bible says he is the way and he is the truth and he is the light. And truth, truth, truth 
has a way of, of offending every one of us that are here listening today. I submit to you that if Jesus hasn't ever offended you, then you most probably don't have a relationship with him at all. He will offend you because he's trying to get you to the truth that he is. Can somebody say amen? amen. This is certainly not original, but I think Jesus is a lot like spandex, <laughs> drunk people, and toddlers. They are going to give you the truth, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Jesus offends. The relationship is a context of offense. Every relationship that you have runs the risk of offense. You don't get offended in, in isolations. Sometimes Jesus is offending you, and sometimes it's people that are offending you, and sometimes it's both at the same time. And that's exactly what occurred in our text today. The Bible says that this was a Canaanite woman, Brother Josh Allen, who approaches Jesus Christ. And at that time, Brother Moore, Canaanites and Israelites had years of tension and years of offense. And can you imagine the courage of this Canaanite woman approaching this Jewish Jesus? Have you ever had to walk into a room, but you knew the people in there hated you? Come on now. Somebody's preaching with me over here. What would make a woman do what she did that day? What made her do what she did that day was the devil was messing with her children. And when the devil starts messing with your children, it will pull stuff out of you that you didn't know was there. Come on, somebody. You preach to women if you got three, if you got some children today. It's one thing for the devil to attack you. It's one thing for the devil to attack your business. It's one thing for the devil to attack your Ford expedition. My AC keeps going out. If you've ridden with me lately, you have to kick it under the dash on the passenger side to make it come back on. If you don't believe me, ask Brother James McChristian or Brother Lance Lewis. It works when you kick it. <laughs> it's one thing to get offended about the Ford Expedition, but it's a whole nother level when they start messing with your children. You don't mess with people's children. <laughs> Can somebody say amen? I don't care if you roll your eyes at me, Peter. This is my baby girl, and I heard that this Jesus has the power to heal the sick, and I heard that he's still casting out demons. Son of David, will you have mercy on me? And Jesus, that day, he heard her. And as soon as she cried out, Jesus pulled out his phone. He started looking at Facebook. He started looking at Instagram. She, she, <clears throat> she clears her throat. Lord, son of David, my baby Carl is tormented. But look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 23. Jesus did not answer her a word. Jesus did not say a word. Anybody in here had to deal with the offense of being ignored? When you cry out to Jesus about your situation and he doesn't say yes and he doesn't say no, he doesn't say anything. First offense we have to encounter is the offense of being ignored. 
One of the words for offense is a stumbling block. It's meant to trip you up. And if ignored by Jesus, but maybe, if not ignored by Jesus, but maybe other people. I remember my dad years ago when I was a kid and I would come in and he would be reading the paper and I would ask him a question. Dad, can I go play with my friends? Can I go spend the night with them? He'd never quit reading. He'd never respond. I knew the answer to the question. The offense of being ignored. And being ignored is worse than being rejected. When I send a text to you and you don't respond, I know you got it. It says it was delivered. I could stay there a while. <laughs> I will say this, as a pastor, I do have a rule. I try my best, and if I fail, please forgive me. But I do have a rule. If you text me or email me or call me, my rule is to return that within 24 hours if possible. If the only response I can give you, I'm busy, I'll call you next week. Maybe some of you should start that practice. Everybody wants to be noticed. Have you noticed? You see my post? You didn't like my post. When you get ignored, an offense can occur. I'm sure this lady thought that day, well, you, you talked to blind Bartimaeus. You talked to the woman with the issue of blood, but you can't talk to me? Not this woman. She kept asking. She kept pressing into, you need to keep pressing. I'm telling you today, don't give up too soon. Sometimes God wants to see if you will keep pushing through, if you will be relentless, if you will have a made up mind and you will have that pit in your stomach. I am going to live for God. I am going to serve God. I will not be offended. God, I will not let you go till you bless me. And you know how crazy you look when you keep talking to somebody who ignores you? She did not get a response, Brother Dale Rutherford, from Jesus, but she did get a response from his constituents. She did get a response from his disciples. She did get a response from his believers. Look at Matthew 15 and 23. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out. What does it say? After us. Where in this tech bishop hill did she say Peter? Where in this text did she say Bartholomew? Please listen to me. Don't get twisted and think it's about you. It's about Jesus Christ. We must never forget it's not about us. It's all about him. He must increase and I must decrease. He must abound and I must be a base. I came this morning to lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It's not about me being lifted up. It's not about you being lifted up. It's about lifting Jesus up. And when we do, this church is going to be filled. We're going to have to go to three services. I want to lift them up. Can somebody say amen. Amen. Woe unto believers who think it's about them. The disciples are a clear picture of the second type of offense. That's the offense of the institution or the offense of the church. Isn't it funny that the disciples, the very rejects themselves, who Jesus reached out to is now, that the disciples are now sending her away. The disciples represent the offense of the institution. Sometimes the greatest offenses, listen to me, that will ever occur will not be from Jesus, but from those, Brother David Hunt, who bear his name. 
There's so many in Northeast Mississippi that have been offended by Jesus, but also there's so many that have been offended by the church. Those who represent him, so many can get over the offense of somebody in the church who hurt them. What do you do with the offense of church hurt? Maybe you're here today and you're still trying to get over the events of church hurt. Listen to me this morning. Never project the nature of man onto the character of God. God is good. God is love all the time. Don't let church hurt keep you from loving Jesus. Don't let church hurt keep you from out from being in the church this morning. Just because they hurt you doesn't mean that Jesus will hurt you. And just because they betrayed you does not mean that Jesus will betray you. He's going to stick by it even until the end of the world. There are no perfect churches. If there is one, there ain't nobody in it. If this would have happened to us, if I would have been ignored by Jesus and if I would have been hurt by the ones who were supposed to love me, I most probably would have gone. You most probably would have gone, but not this woman. And because she stayed, because she didn't leave, God spoke I came to tell you in the Holy Ghost today, if you will stay, God will speak. Don't leave the church. You got to stay planted in the house. Oh, God, this is your saving station. This is your hospital. This is your place of refuge. This is your strong tower. You got to run into it and you will be saved. The only bananas that get peeled is the one that leaves the bunch. But if you stay, if you stay, and I hope you do, you might not like what he says. The Bible tells us in Matthew 15 and 24, he answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. He basically looked at her and said, I ain't here for you. I'm on assignment. I have an assignment from the Lord Jesus Christ. The third offense that people face is the offense of insignificance. That's feeling that Jesus says you don't matter. Little Lance Lewis, will you come up here? He don't even know this. Offenses. Offenses are like lenses. Come on up here. Let me see your glasses. They're dirty. They certainly need cleaning. (laughs) I sure can't read my notes now. Someone doesn't speak to you. Ah, I knew he didn't like me. Start building stuff up in your mind. When the problem was... I didn't really see you, buddy. I was so busy and preoccupied with what I was on mission for that I really didn't see you. Just because I see it a certain way doesn't mean that I am right. It's just my prescription. My vantage point doesn't validate me just because I see it a certain way. And this is the culture that we live in. Just because you see it a certain way doesn't mean that you are right. And just because you are offended doesn't mean that you are a right. When we switch glasses there, Lance is blind. You can't see. No wonder you see it your way. He's looking at me and says, Pastor, you can't see either. (laughs) Thank you. This is happening in marriages. It's happening in the church. It's happening in relationships. 
But offenses are like lenses. Whenever an offense occurs, we must first pray. Don't post. Pray. Pray for clarity. Lord, help me to see it the right way. I feel it. I feel it a certain way, but help me to have clarity to see it the right way. Bring somebody into the situation. Help us both see it clearly. From her vantage point, it's in significance. But you put on the lenses of Jesus Christ from his vantage point, Bishop. He said, I'm here for the lost sheep of Israel. It's not insignificance. It's precedence. He's saying the children of Israel take precedence. I'm here first for the Jews, but then I'm here for the Gentiles. And just because they take precedence doesn't mean that you are insignificant. Every one of you matter in the kingdom of God. But if you're not careful, you will become offended with the offense of insignificance. What do you mean, Pastor? That's like going to the hospital. How many of you ever sprained your ankle? I sprained my ankle many times, played a lot of basketball. I thought it was broken, and I'd go to the hospital, and I was, you know, be there waiting. And then, and then all of a sudden, you know, if I'm in there with a sprained ankle and a gunshot victim comes through the door, what are they going to do with me, Brother Dale? They're going to throw me a bag of ice and say, hold on, sucker. We got to deal with this gunshot victim to save his life. I can't just throw that bag of ice at them and throw a fit and just say, keep your bag of ice. I know this hospital didn't love people. They don't know how to treat people. No, honey pie, nobody is saying you are insignificant. We're just saying that they right now in this moment, they take pre precedent. It is a life or a death situation. We've got to save this gunshot victim. But in this culture that we live in, this narcissistic, self-centered, me, 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 me world, anytime you don't take precedent, you can get offended. And all of these offenses... I'm human. You're human. I most probably would have gone. I most probably would have walked out the back door. But the Bible says, you know what she did? She got down on her knees. She changed her posture. She said, Lord, please help me. How many times you and I are on the edge of a breakthrough instead of walking away, all you have to do is get down on your knees and say, God, I'm still going to worship you. You are worth all the glory. You're worth all the honor. You're worth all the praise. Don't walk away today, but worship the one who has made all the difference in every one of our lives. She could have walked away but she worshiped. Man, in reading that, I would have thought, I would have thought that, that, that worship, somebody asked me to preach on worship the other day, and I will here in a few weeks, I would have thought that worship would have gotten his attention. But in this story, in this incident, it did not get his attention. Jesus comes in for the Jesus reply. It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Jesus, the compassionate Savior, the all-loving one, called this woman a dog when she's crying out about her daughter. What would I have done? What would you have done? Please come to the music. This fourth offense is the offense of being insulted. Jesus called her a dog. In that day, the Jewish people called the Gentiles dogs. But in looking at this, he doesn't use the term 
wild dog. He uses the term in our language of a pet dog. But either way, he called her a dog. How many of you have a pet dog? Raise your hand. My Lord, have mercy. We got a lot in this church. That moment right there was her breaking point. Most of us, fence number one, we're gone. Fence number two, we're definitely gone. Fence number three, we're out of here. Adios, amigos. The fourth offense. She got a revelation. She said, you called me a pet dog. All the other Jews are saying wild dog, but you called me a pet dog. Those of you that have pet dogs, if you don't, you may not can relate to what I'm preaching this morning, but those of you that have pet dogs, you know there's a difference between a wild dog and a pet dog. A pet dog, I've seen pictures of it in videos of Brother David Hunt. A pet dog comes inside your house. A pet dog comes up in your recliner. A pet dog will even sleep in your bed. And I've talked to many of you that have pet dogs. There's not one of them, or one of you that I've talked to that your pet dog doesn't have a name. Your pet dog has an identity. A wild dog, I'm sure. Brother Randy has to go through the trash trying to figure out what he's going to eat, but a pet dog can eat whatever the master is eating. Steak. Come on, baby. Shrimp. Bring it on. And maybe you're saying it has nothing to do with me being a dog, but everything to do with you being my master. If you are my master, that means I am going to have everything that I need. You can call me a dog, but just be my master. Could we stand together? Too many people, too many people encounter one or two, or three, or four of these offenses. And if we're not careful, they become stumbling blocks. But today, I pray that you can make them a stepping stone. I'm gonna step over these. It's a stepping stone to my miracle. You've got to get over the fact of these four offenses, the events of being ignored, the offense of the institution, the events of insignificance, and the offense. When you get over it, your miracle is on the other side of it. Watch this. Look at Matthew 15 and 28. Then Jesus said to her, woman. Now, not too many men can say woman, but Jesus can. He said, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Say, at that moment. Which moment? The moment that she forgot about it and moved home. Offense is a decision, but offended is a decision, but offense is an event. God wants to give you the grace and strength to forget about it and move home. God will often do your miracle after the offense, and Jesus Christ gave us the best example. He said, we experience the miracle of salvation because he doesn't hold any sin against us. Today I came to pray. May there be healing in your family. May there be healing in your life. I want you today to repent of those offenses, and I want you to forgive it today. I want you to release it today, and I want you to let it go. I need the grace and the strength to forget about it and move on. Will you give it to Jesus today? Will you give it to Jesus today? We all know that Paul had a thorn in the flesh, but Paul didn't let a thorn in the flesh become a thorn in his spirit. I pray we would not let things get in us. If you do, it's going to be passed down from one generation to another. Do not become bitter today. I want you to become better. 
I came to preach you something that God laid up on my heart several weeks ago. I want you to know that God loves you today. I want you to know that God cares about you today. And if we're not careful, offenses will sidetrack us. Offenses will cause us to have a stumbling block and we will forget the church and we will forget God. But I pray today it will not be a stumbling block, but it will be a stepping stone for you to see a miracle in your life, not only physically, but mentally and spiritually most of all. If you would right now close your eyes throughout this place. Father, I thank you. And and Lord, I pray here in life in Tupelo, you will start a revival of believers who will do their best to live unoffendable. May the world see us as people that are unoffended and let it change them. Father, you don't hold you don't hold sins against us. How dare we hold anything against anybody else? I'm telling you today, you got to let it go. You can't hold anything against a brother or a sister or a family member. Thank you, Lord, for paying the price for my sin on the cross. Thank you that you have the power to say, Father, forgive them. And today I receive that power in my life. If anybody had a right to be offended, it was this lady. If anybody had a right to be offended, it was Jesus. But I pray today that you have the power to forgive and the power to forget about it and move on. Give me the grace, Lord, to forgive. As they sing this morning, right where you're at, could you make, right where you're standing altar. Certainly, if you're willing this morning, these altars are open. We encourage you to wear your mask. But if you would like to come kneel today at this altar, say, Father, I give it to you. Today, I'm going to forget about it, and I'm going to move on. Every one of us have been offended in some way. One of these four categories that I shared with you today. And if God is breaking your heart, if you want to make sure that everything's right, kneel right where you're at or come to this altar and kneel. God is bringing healing today to lives. God is bringing healing today to families. You got to forget about it and move on. If you don't, you can't be healed. If you don't, you can't be saved. I want to see you make it to heaven, but you've got to repent and you've got to forgive.
all about it's not about me I decrease as you increase it's all about you. it's not about me
All across this place, we surrender to you, Jesus. The race that is happening, not only here in this building, but online. Thank you for joining us online today. We pray you have been blessed. We pray something has been said or done that has spoken to you. Please, 